Ms. Carly Beating. I'm your SGA Vice President and Chair of the Election Committee. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. I know it's a busy week and you guys have a lot of other things going on, so I really appreciate you coming out tonight to SGA Debates. Um, I hope you're excited as I am to hear what the, what the candidates for Executive Board have to say. So before we begin, I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you about some of the SGA's accomplishments this year. Um, this year, we implemented the Vice President for Student Experience position and the Student Experience Committee. Um, this committee and position is dedicated to promoting the five pillars of pride and spirit traditions, academics, engagement, student services, and campus culture. This position and group also works hard to collect and organize data gauging the student experience to help SGA advocate on your behalf. SGA worked with the town of Hamden and Mayor Kurt Lang to increase communication and understanding between Hamden and Quinnipiac. We continuously heard student concerns and met regularly with Chartwells to help implement changes that students wanted to see in food services. We hope to continue to use our working relationship with Chartwells to improve campus dining options. SGA also met regularly with public safety and dealt with concerns about campus behavior, student safety, and transportation and parking concerns. We're an ever-changing and ever-growing student body, and each year not only brings about new concerns and new opportunity, but also new student leadership. On Wednesday, the student body gets to choose who will be representing them and advocating on their behalf next year. Please remember to cast your votes on GUQU on Wednesday, and remember that SGA always welcomes students to voice their concerns and opinions so that we can work together to make Quinnipiac the best place it can be. So now, I want to introduce our candidates for student body president, um, Joseph Mullaney and Chris Desolate. The format of this debate will go that everyone has the opportunity to give a two minute opening and then they will have a chance to answer questions at a one minute response. They can reply to their opponent's answer to the question in 30 second response and then and then they will also have a 90 second closing statement. So for our first question, oh, I'm sorry, yes. So introducing Chris, he will be giving his statement first. Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Chris Deslitz and I'm running for student body president. As student body president, I will work to make students the focus of the university's long-term planning. We've heard time and time again about the growth of Quinnipiac over the last 20 years, and that growth has finally reached a point that we cannot handle. For the class of 2019, we created bedrooms from spaces that used to be available to all students, and we've had to continue the non-traditional housing for their sophomore year. But the strain of large class sizes stretches beyond res life and affects every single student, regardless of year. Lines in the cafeteria and post office have become longer than we've ever seen before. For the first time, Quinnipiac has had class sizes of 70 plus students, and it's only going to get worse. Next year's class is going to be the same size, if not bigger. The class of 2019 will be bringing their cars to a campus that already cannot handle the parking demands, and wait times on campus will only be getting longer. The time to make changes isn't when the school becomes unmanageable. The time for change is now. And administration is changing. President Leahy's cabinet quietly announced plans to raise Quinnipiac's endowment by over $650 million in under 15 years. To be clear, the money that goes into the endowment will never be spent on the students. The university will cut back on all spending on anything that is deemed non-essential. There will likely not be any investment in things the students want, like a coffee shop on main campus, a bar on York Hill, or club sports for all students. At the same time, tuition will increase. Next year, Quinnipiac sticker price will be over $60,000. And for the first, and I'll be the first to say, I'm tired of stressing over student loans and or even seeing my friends transfer because Quinnipiac's become completely unaffordable. We, the students, care about this university as much as anybody, and it's our time we get our say in long-term planning. If we continue this trend, Quinnipiac will become just another university that cares more about money than students. As student body president, I will fight to stop the increase of tuition, but most importantly, I will fight to make students a top priority once again. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Now we'll be hearing from our other candidate, Joseph Mullaney. Let's go. How's it going, guys? Uh, I want to first start off by saying thank you for all coming. Um, 
We didn't expect to make turn up, but I'm glad to see you all are here and happy. And I first want to say I'm very honored to be in this position that I'm able to run for your next student body president. Um, so, small story about me. When I came here as a freshman, I started using a scooter. And, I mean, I was very afraid, like all of you were when you came here, and I was extra afraid because I didn't want kids to look at me weird. I didn't want people to see me as a charity case. I didn't want people to judge me right away. And that's how some students feel now. I changed because I was able to find a good group, make good experiences with others, but also I was able to tell my story. I was able to feel comfortable about being myself. There are kids on this campus, mainly cultural groups, that don't feel that way. We're often judged by Quinnipiac not being diverse. And to be honest, we're not. But we can change that. And I say we as all of us on SGA. I don't say I. I'm going to be the one leading it, but not in charge. And not the one who can make it possible. We can. We can do it. Thank you all. Thank you, Joseph. So since Chris got the or got to speak first, um, you'll get the first question, Joey. So what do you see as the greatest issue currently facing the university? Um, great question. Uh, I kind of just touched upon it, but definitely cultural awareness around campus. Um, it's a small lesson that I want to see happen. Um, raise your or please follow me. Um, raise your hand if you heard of or plan on attending the big event. Nice. Um, raise your hand if you have heard of or plan or attended Qthon. Now raise your hand if you've ever been to an event put on by MSA or BSU. That's got to change. Right there, you see it firsthand. Some people probably don't even know what BSU stands for. That is my main issue that I want to take care of and I want to change. Thank you, Joey. Chris, do you have an opportunity for a rebuttal? All right, Joe. So I think you have a good point that there are a lot of students who haven't been to MSA or BSU events. I would also like to ask, how many people in the club in the, in the United States have ever been to a sign language club event? Chess club. Yes, that our cultural groups are underrepresented, and I work with these groups every single day. So my question for you is, what would you actually do to help these groups grow? Um, great question. Um, I'm giving. You have 30 seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, my main focus would be to have an SGA co-sponsor with these organizations. Um, I'd be able to not only like help them grow because they have great events. Like last week. Islamic Awareness event, as some SGA students attended. It's great events they put on, but not many students knew about it. So that would be my main focus to make students aware. Thank you. Chris, same question for you. What do you see as the greatest issue facing the university? So I, again, I, I also touched on this in my opening. I think, I think the greatest issue facing the university is our tuition. $60,000 puts us well above many of our parents' institutes. Uh, and, and that's scary for a university that doesn't really offer a crazy amount different from what other universities offer. We talk about how we're student focused and, and there's a chance we're going to lose that in the future and we, we got to be honest about that. Um, with the focus on the endowment, that's taking attention away from the students and it's also pulling investment from the students. So our greatest issue is our tuition but also how we're spending it. Joey, would you like to respond? Uh, I mean, no, that would be great if you can lower tuition. but. That would be a hard thing. <laughs> All right, um, Chris, the next question you can have first. Um, how would you personally shape the role of SGA president to best serve the needs of the students? So I, I think one of the important things that's been lost on student government over, over the past few years is the importance of the student body president, the student government association president, on developing student government. For the past few years, we've, we've kind of had presidents that haven't really been around have focused more on their relationships with administration, which is huge, but at some point it gets lost. At some point you can't hand down a relationship, but you can always hand down the things you've learned. You can always hand, you can always pass on the things that will make you better and make our leadership better. So it might not help, it might not help the, the student body right away, but a better student government association, a stronger student government association, helps, helps the student body every single day.
Thank you. Joey, would you like to respond? Uh, well, yeah, it's fine, class. Oh, to that now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Joey, same question for you. Um, how would you personally shape the role of SGA president to best serve the needs of the Yeah, well, uh, Chris said it. The first step is internally. That would be a great job. Um, my main focus, like I said in my opening, was that it's we, not me. Um, so I would not be the one in charge of representing SGA. It would be all of us. Yes, like I would be at the top if elected, but it wouldn't be me making all the choices, all the decisions, it'd be all of us. Thank you. Chris, would you like to respond? Yeah. Okay. So, Joey, the, the next question is for you first. Um, other than the goals that you've already stated, what would be your, another primary goal that you have as SGA president? Um, I mean, like I said, not like you said, something different, but I mean, just make students enjoy coming to Quinnipiac. I hate when people say, oh, I hate Quinnipiac, I want to transfer. I love Quinnipiac. I would never even think to transfer, and I know many students like that, but I know a lot of freshmen did transfer. And if there's a way that SGA can you know, change that, I'm all for it, and I'm all for helping achieve that goal. All right. Thank you. Chris, would you like to respond? All right, so Chris, other than the goals that you already stated, what would be another primary goal for you as SGA president? So as, as student body president, one of the other things I would work on is creating a position within administration called an abundsman. What an abundsman is, is it's a true administrator that doesn't really report to anybody up above. And what it is, is it's just solely an advocate for the students. So if you are charged, um, let's say that the RA found alcohol in your room, and you want to know what the process is and what that process looks like, the abundsman is a person you can go to to get advice and to get help. Which doesn't sound like that big of a deal when we're talking about alcohol. When we talk about students that have been accused of things like rape or sexual assault, it's a huge issue. And your orientation leader, your RA, an administrator who, who doesn't really have that, that um, like, like freedom, isn't really someone you can always rely on. The truth is, you might not be able to go to Sean Callagher because he runs conduct. And you might not be comfortable going to him if you've been accused of something like rape, even if you're not guilty. And a bondsman is something, is something that every student-focused university needs. It's something we don't have. Thank you. Joey, would you like to respond? I'll say it. All right. Um, Joey, so you are now welcome to give your 90-second closing. So uh, I want to thank you guys once again for letting me be in this position. But more so, I want to thank Chris. Chris and I got to work together on executive board this year. It was awesome. Um, I'm glad it's, we ran against each other. I know you, you want to be here as much as I. Um, I know you didn't want to do something else. I know you wanted student body press, and I'm glad you went for it. But overall, I care about this school. I care about you students. I would do whatever possible I can do to make you feel better about being here and make your experience better. So on Wednesday, please vote. I thank you. In closing, I want to talk about the role of the student body president. The role of the student body president is not to be the face of the student body. The role of the student body president is to be the voice of the student body. It's the student body's president's job to fight for the interests of all students, and I will fight for you. I'll make sure that your concerns get brought forward to administration, and I'll make sure that student government works to create a better university. No one on this stage tonight has more experience in representing the students than I do. No one on this stage tonight has worked with more administrators or more student leaders than I have. And I have worked on initiatives that affect, affect students of every year, race, major, religion, and any other demographic you can think of. When it comes to who can defend the student body best, there is no debate. I am the most qualified person for this job. And I'm excited to take the student government forward and fight for the students to make sure that we continue to be the university's focus. This year, student government will focus on keeping tuition in check. We'll, we will work on making sure that plans to increase the endowment don't stop plans to make this university better for students. And we will make sure that the growth of the university will not change the experience promised to every Quinnipiac student. I am Chris Desolitz, and I'm asking for your vote to be your student voice and your student body president. Thank you.
like to invite to the podium our student body vice president candidate, Alec Turner. So, Alec, now you have an opportunity for a two-minute opening statement. Thank you, Carly. First off, I would like to thank everyone here tonight. Uh, it's truly amazing to see this many people here interested in seeing the next leaders of the Student Government Association. And for those of you who do not know me, my name is Alec Turner. I am a junior print journalism major from Taunton, Massachusetts. When I was about to start my freshman year here at Quinnipiac, I got the same line from my mother and father that so many other incoming students have gotten. College is the best four years of your life. This isn't the only time I heard something like this. One of my roommates and best friends always says that the most important part of college is the memories that you make. Even though he usually says this to make me procrastinate, my roommate's right. I'm not saying that we are here not to get a world-class education, but college is in fact the place where you get to make the best memories of your life. And although I have enjoyed the past two and a half years at Quinnipiac, the opportunity to make good memories here could be a lot better. Quinnipiac is at a point where the student body lacks a sense of tradition, school spirit, and pride. Student government surveyed the student body this year, and we said that the Quinnipiac Yale hockey game was the first best uh, tradition at Quinnipiac, and May weekend was the second. And let me inform you that May weekend is no way affiliated with the university. The women's ice hockey team um, ranked fifth in the nation this year, and they averaged just over 500 fans a game this year, compared to over 3,200 attendance for the men's team. I'm not asking you to stop celebrating last week in April, and I'm not asking you to become a season ticket holder for all Quinnipiac teams. I'm just asking you to join on the journey to make the Quinnipiac community enriched in tradition and pride. As student body vice president, I will work with administration and the entire student body to bring back the pride of being a Bobcat. I will have SGA hold events to make the student body pleased to be at Quinnipiac and make those memories that my roommate always tells me about. To touch back on what my parents said to me three years ago, college is the best four years of your life. Let's start making that the case here at Quinnipiac. Thank you, Alec. Now you'll have an opportunity for one minute response to each of the questions. As chair of the Student Advocacy Committee, the SGA Vice President is responsible for addressing student concerns. What do you see as the top priority for that position to address next year if elected? Um, yeah, I touched on that in my opening statement and my running mate Joey Mullaney also kind of touched on it. Um, it's the interest of the student body. They really don't see um, what they are looking for here at the university, whether it be events that they can attend at, on the weekends or just a place to hang out. One thing that student government is working on is to get a student lounge or a student union here on campus, whether that be here in the student center now or a separate building for it. So I truly think that we need a place to be as well as things to happen in that place um, for the student body. Thank you. What do you see as the biggest challenge that you see SGA facing in internally, and how would you plan to overcome this obstacle if elected? Uh, personally, one of the bigger issues in student government internally is member motivation. Um, I would like to strive to have every member stay on for an entire year, unless an um, emergency circumstance occurs. But I believe that member motivation is something that really needs to be pushed on SGA members and make them help the student body because we are serving you guys here the students so i would love to have them motivated and pushing to actually get what you guys deserve all right one more question what strategies do you plan to use to advocate on behalf of the student body so i would love to meet with different types of organizations depending on race culture ethnicity um, gender every type of organization to work with them um, one organization I believe that SGA does not work with very well, even though it's not a uh, cultural organization, is the uh, Student Athlete Advocacy Committee. Um, I believe that working with student athletes to promote school spirit and tradition is something that is, is extremely important because right now, like I said, the men's IC hockey team is the only athletic team that gets any form of attendance. So I believe that Promoting school spirit, promoting events to benefit the student athletes is very important. All right, thank you. Now, a 90 second closing. Um, yeah, so I really don't have much else to say. Um, I want to thank all of you once again for being here. Um, I want to thank every other candidate for um, showing up and as well as running. 
Uh, I would love to serve you on the Student Government Association, and uh, thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite to the podium the candidate for Vice President for Student Experience, Ali Munchi. Okay. <laughs> Ali, whenever you're ready, you can begin your two-minute opening statement. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I just want to start off by saying thank you so much uh, to everyone. Who, who came out tonight, and even to the gentleman that just left. It's, it's, it's great that they came, that they attended, uh, that they decided to, to, to stay and watch. My name is Ali Munshi, and a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a political science major, I'm a sophomore, and I am running to become your next vice president for student experience. When I started here last year, I had a very long conversation with my brother, but the one point that I took away from it was that college is what you make of it. The experiences that you share for four years will stay with you for the rest of your life. And I think it's very, it's, it's, very, it's very important that for a student leader to take over this position, they understand the student body better than anyone else. And that they connect with the student body better than every, anyone else. And that's something that I bring to this, this position. And that's something that I'm going to do. All right. Thank you, Ollie. Um, your first question is, the Vice President for Student Experience position and the Student Experience Committee were a part of SGA for the first time this year. What do you see as the strengths and weaknesses of this committee and position? So having served on the committee myself this past year, uh, I can honestly say that our first step in laying the foundation and the groundwork for this uh, position to thrive in the future uh, has been laid. And Lindsay Banks has done a fantastic job ever since she's taken over, and uh, I'm hoping to do the same. Some of the positives that we've had uh, over the past year is serving the student body and understanding exactly what it is that they want out of their experience. Uh, there are many students on this campus that feel that they can't express themselves. And so the Student Experience Committee, uh, along with Lindsay Banks, we, we put together an event uh, that was breaking down the stigma behind the 61%. And at this event, people came, they expressed themselves uh, musically, artistically, politically, religiously, and just to sort of feel as if they were very included with this campus. And that's something that, that, that I'm going to bring to this campus. And that's something that, that we were, that we started on, we're on the right track and we're getting towards. Thank you. SGA uses data to work with administration and advocate on behalf of the student body. The Vice President for Student Experience is responsible for collecting and organizing data. If elected, how do you plan to come up with innovative ways, ways to get data from students? So the, the groundwork again for this has been laid this past, uh, this, these, this past year. And what, what we've done on the Student Experience Committee uh, is the Tuesday Twos. And that's something that the entire student body, there's around 600 to 800 uh, people who usually take this, uh, the, this question and this survey for us. And that helps us gauge what they want, what they're interested in, um, how they feel their student experience is on this campus. And hopefully in the future, my plan is to uh, continue going with the Tuesday twos, maybe have a follow-up Friday, ask another question, something, you know, uh, about Chartwell, something about, um, uh, you know, the athletics, something about the coffee shop uh, initiative, things that the SGA is doing and reach that out to the student body. So that's something that, that we'll definitely be looking into. Uh, another thing is trying to get students more involved with the court board that's outside the SGA suite. Uh, we encourage students to come, write down any concerns that they have, um, whether it's that's with their experience or or, or uh, academics, athletics, or whatever the case may be. So that's another thing that I'm going to try and push. Thank you. If elected, what are your plans to continue to develop the position of student experience to best serve the students? So one of the biggest issues the past year uh, that Quinnipiac has had was with diversity and inclusion. And I think what we've started this past year has really led us to this point. Um, and I think it's time that we we include everyone in the student body. And when I say that, I mean, you know, when when Joseph Mullaney was up here and he said something about the MSA, and when Chris Deslitz was up there and he said something about the chess club, nobody raised their hand. And Chris is absolutely right. The chess club should be known just as much as the MSA. And that's a fact. And that's something that, that the Student Experience Committee is going to try and do. And they're going to try to assimilate these people into, into this culture and 
into, into the Quinnipiac home and, and promote this We Are Quinnipiac campaign. Thank you. I'll let you even announce uh, your 90 second closing. So once again, I would just like to thank everybody that came and supported all the candidates today. I think it's very important that you all have a say in what you want your student government to be like. Um, if there's one thing that I want to leave you with is that um, there is no candidate that will speak before you today that is as passionate about Quinnipiac as I am. Um, and I think when it comes down to experience and when it comes down to understanding the student body, I am the best at this position and there will and then there's no doubt in my mind that I'll be able to serve the student body the way that they deserve to be treated and served. Thank you. I'm gonna give up my podium once again and invite um, our candidates for Vice President for Finance to the podiums, George Cordy and Sal Nashi. So we'll start with you, George, whenever you're ready. You just have a little microphone fumble, so we'll wait for you. But um, whenever your first word is, you'll have your two-minute opening statement. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Carly, and thank you to everyone who's here tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is George Cordy, and I'm running for Vice President of Finance. I'm currently a junior finance and accounting major here at school. My education in both finance and accounting gives me a great foundation for this position. However, this position isn't just about electing someone with a background in the field. It is also about electing someone who has the communication skills to be an excellent liaison between student organizations, university administration, and the entire student body. Right now, the position of Vice President of Finance mainly deals with allocating funds to chartered student organizations. It also deals with managing SGA financial transactions. However, I see great growth for this position. I plan to broaden the roles of the SGA Finance Committee. I would love to make it more of an open forum in which students can come to the Finance Committee on all matters, such as tuition, new construction projects, dealing with outside vendors, such as Charwells, or just anything in general. The role of student government is to act as a voice for all of you, and that is exactly what I would like to do with the Finance Committee. Good evening. For those of you who know me and don't, my name is Sal Neshi, and with your help this Wednesday, I will be your next Vice President for Finance of the Student Government Association. I'd like to share with you something that I learned from somebody much wiser than myself. Nearly a thousand years ago, when universities were first founded, they were autonomously governed by the students for the students. This serves to us as a reminder that the central focus of university is the student body. I am proud to say that here at Quinnipiac, we are blessed with an administration under the guidance of Dr. Thompson and Dr. Leahy, who are truly student-oriented and value the student experience. I believe it is a primary function of the Student Government Association and its executive board to serve as the liaisons between the student body and our administration, to be the voice of the students, the loudest voice in the room, and the voice that will not stop no matter any obstacle in its way. When elected this Wednesday, I promise each and one of, every one of you that I, Sal Neshi, will be this voice, the loudest voice in the room that will not be stopped, no matter what I am put up against. I have a deeply rooted passion for this university unlike no other. From a long line of alumni, I like to say I was born a Bobcat, and promise you all I will live every day to the fullest extent that I can as a Bobcat. I believe that through this position as the Vice President for Finance for the Student Government Association, I can help and voice the concerns of every student for all their fiscal concerns within this university community and to help make Quinnipiac and the student experience as great as it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Sal. Sal, since um, George spoke first on the opening statements, you'll get the first question. <coughs> SJ implemented a new finance policy this year. If elected, how do you plan to continue to improve the finance policy and budgeting process to most efficiently allocate SGA's budget to student organizations? So I believe the most important part of the entire budgeting and allocating funds process that needs to be taken care of is the uh, special appeals portion. I believe that 
we as a finance committee and as a university should allow organizations more than just a couple attempts to uh, appeal their budgets and to ask for more funds. Uh, throughout a semester or even the whole academic year, many things can come up mostly, most of the time, when students have to appeal for extra funds. It's not always expected. And I think that instead of limiting them to a few instances where they can appeal for those funds, we should open it up and make it you know, more accessible to the students in the orgs. Thank you, Sal. George, would you like to rebuttal? All right, so same question for you. Um, SDA implemented a new finance policy this year. If elected, how do you plan to continue to improve the finance policy and budgeting process to most efficiently allocate SGA's budget to student organizations? Okay, so first, I think that Chris did a great job with the new finance policy. Um, I actually sat down with Chris and I talked about the finance policy, um, and I think he did a lot of great things with it. I think one of the best things he did is block funding. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically where certain organizations which regularly receive large funds from student government, such as SPB, um, they can get those large funds without providing a line item for like all of the things that they're doing throughout the semester. Um, this also comes with the notion that the following year they're going to have a complete audit by the finance committee. Let it also be known, and this is directly from the finance policy, that this doesn't allow organizations that are receiving this block funding to um, to, to kind of go outside the limits of the finance policy. They have to stay within it. Um, so I, I'm really excited to see what, what Chris and Act did, honestly. Um, but also, I'm willing to be flexible with the finance policy. Um, we'll see what how the changes go, what he did. Thank but, you, George. That's time. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, next question. George, this is for you first. Oh, I'm sorry. Sal, would you like, to, uh, would you like a rebuttal? Uh, I welcome you. Okay. <laughs> So uh, in terms of flexibility on the finance policy, I'm, I'll admit I'm no expert on university policy, but I think in order to be flexible with it, we need to change it and to insert places where we can be flexible. Our university's policy on these things is pretty cut and dry, so I think in order for us to you know, help other organizations, instead of trying to bend rules that are existing, we should create new rules for those orgs and go beyond just SPB, maybe some other big organizations that do a lot for this university whose funds are often uh, cut down, like the SVO and other orgs. George, do you like a response? Yeah, so i just like to say, yeah, we need to be flexible. This is what I was trying to finish up with. And I'm, I'm going to be very flexible with the committee. But also, giving them more money, it's going to be really difficult because next year, we have a budget that's staying the same. So when he's talking about giving uh, more funds to organizations, that's going to be incredibly hard to do. So I just want to say that. All right, George, the next question is for you. One of the most important parts of the Vice President for Finance's position is being accessible to, meeting with, and conveying information to student organizations. If elected, how do you plan on managing your time to be able to be accessible to the organizations? Definitely. So I think I'm, I'm incredibly accessible. Um, I sat down, as I mentioned, with Chris. I also sat down with Matt Powers, who was the VP of Finance two years ago. Um, and we talked about how demanding this position is. Um, and I'm. I know exactly what I'm getting into, and I'm, I'm ready to take on this role. I'm fully committed to it. And I just want to be here for all organizations. Um, I think I have the, the good communication skills, the great communication skills to do that. I want every organization to feel comfortable coming to me with whatever concerns they have. Um, at the same time, I don't want to just stand up here and tell you this position is just about me. I want the finance committee to be involved as much as possible, too. I want people to come with questions to the finance committee, too. So. This definitely requires accessibility, and I'll have exactly that. Thank you, George. Sal, same question. Um, one of the most important parts of the Vice President for Finance's position is being accessible to and conveying information to student organizations. If elected, how do you plan on managing your time to be accessible to these students? So, I'll be honest, Quintero, SGA is the only organization where I'm required to take an oath saying that it will be you know, first on my list when it comes to prioritizing my time. I find it hard for anybody to commit, make that commitment to more than one organization. Uh, I commend people who are able to you know, commit to two organizations and say that that organization will be first on their radar you know, for everything they do, but I can assure you that uh, student government is the only organization that I will be making that commitment to. All right, thank you. Sal, the next question is for you first. 
SGA's budget has increased steadily over the past five years, and in the 2016-2017 school year will no longer be increasing. If elected, how do you plan to use the available funds to fairly all allocate to the student organizations? So I believe in order to fairly allocate funds to student orgs, we need to do what has been done in the years past and just hear the orgs out when they come with their budgets and work with them as much as we can, hear their concerns. And I think that because we're not having an increase in funds this year, I think we should encourage groups to fundraise, you know, try to raise more of their own funds because that's the only way this year, that this academic year, they will be able to get more money is through fundraising. So I think that maybe if the Finance Committee were to get together and make some recommendations for organizations on how to do that and do that effectively to help supplement their budgets given to them by SGA, I think that would be a great use of their time and our efforts. I think so. George, would you like a rebuttal? All right, so the same question for you. SGA's budget has increased steadily over the past five years. In the 2016-2017 school year, it will no longer be increasing. If elected, how do you plan to use the available funds to fairly allocate to the students? So that's a great question, and it's something that I've actually been thinking about a lot. And with the growing student uh, body and with more organizations getting chartered each year, it's definitely going to be hard to disperse the same amount of cash next year. But the budget saying the same, it's, not, it's actually not a bad thing. Because where this budget comes from is our tuition. Um, it, we don't want it to go up because it's student fee money, it'll increase our tuition. So it's not a bad thing that's staying the same. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that I'm going to fight it at all. Uh, instead, what I'd like to do is perform audits of each, each organization. I would like to talk with each of these organizations. When we do that, we can see what they're spending money on, what they can try and raise themselves, um, and I think that we just have to have a great relationship with these organizations and we can figure out how to do this. I also think that's, if that's exactly why it's very important to elect somebody who has the knowledge of finance and accounting to be able to manage a budget. Thank you. Thank you, George. Sal, would you like a rebuttal? I'd love one, yes. So uh, I'd just like to know what amount of our tuition is going towards these, uh, towards these funds. And uh, yeah, that's what I'd like to ask. So it's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the SGA budget. You can divide that by seven thousand. I don't know exactly what that is, um, but it would increase by fifty thousand. That's what it's been doing the past five years. So that would end up being what, like forty dollars for each person if it, if it were to increase. I don't think everybody wants that. So thank you. Yep. All right, Sal. You'll be the first to give your closing statement. All right, well first, I'd like to thank everybody who's helped me get this far. I'd like to thank you all in advance for your support on Wednesday, the election. I just wanna say that as far as Quinnipiac goes, I've stood with the university and its student body yesterday. I stand with you tonight, and I'll be with you tomorrow and in the future. Thank you all for your support, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you, and not only being a voice this coming year, but being your voice as the Vice President for Finance of the Student Government Association. Thank you. Um, so thank you once again to everyone who's here tonight. Being here shows that you actually care about your voice within the, the student body. Regardless of whether or not you're voting for me or not, um, please go out and vote on Wednesday. All members of the student government, the e-board, um, the class presidents, class VPs, the student reps, they're all here to serve you. We're all here to act as a voice between you and student administration. Right now I believe there's a little disconnect between the student body and administration. We the students would like to know what's happening with things such as charbels, new construction projects, the growing population, class sizes getting larger, etc. I promise if elected, I will do everything in my power to bridge this gap. This VP of finance position has a great foundation, but it has a lot of room for growth. Thank you. Thank you, Sal and George. I'd now like to invite to the podium our candidate for Vice President for Public Relations, Brian Lynch. <laughs> Brian, whenever you're ready, you can give your opening statement. Okay. Uh, thank you for everyone who stayed. Um, so, just to start off. I look back to my room, I live in Complex. Every day I found my roommates just sitting there on their phones, watching TV, doing absolutely nothing. This school, we're in college, 
We have so many opportunities to do so many things in our four years here. And the other candidates running for other positions have said this already. Why are you sitting watching Netflix? And I ask my roommates that when they're just sitting there. And they say, we don't know. And they need to know. And they've never known, and they're going to know now. I'm going to take public relations, uh, VP for it. it, through SGA, and I'm going to let students know what they can do, what they should do, and how they can do it, and how they can get involved on campus and actually be contributing students to this university. Thank you, Brian. The Vice President for Public Relations has a unique opportunity to work on Quinnipiac's relationship with the outside community, including the town of Hamden. If elected, how do you plan to use the position to create a better relationship between <coughs> Quinnipiac and Hamden? Well, I think Hamden and uh, Quinnipiac don't have the uh, strongest relationship as of now, especially with, uh, actually no, not that. We do, have, our relationship is not that strong, it's because a small percentage of students that tarnish it, they do stupid stuff off campus, and it gives us a bad reputation. And it doesn't help also when certain people uh, cut the salami on uh, certain weekends and uh, make videos that go viral, especially when they're big leaders on campus. Um, and I think that the members of Hamden need to know how involved and how great our students really are. We do so much. Qthon, philanthropy events through Greek life, the big event, there's so much that we do, and there's so much that we need to show the Hamden residents. And, uh, through our social media and through technology and the things that we can put out there, I think that we can make that relationship a little bit better. Thank you, Ryan. One of the main purposes of the Vice President for Public Relations position is to promote SGA initiatives. If elected, how do you plan to come up with innovative ways to reach the students? I think Joey did a pretty, uh, a really good job this year uh, setting foundation using Snapchat and other forms of social media in order to get our events and what we're doing out there. But I think I can take it a step further. The, this, this technology is changing every day. There's updates on these apps every day, and people are always on their phones. So there's no reason why students shouldn't know. There's got to be a way that is more attractive to students that they look at when they're on their laptops, computers, their phones. And I think that I'm going to be able to make campaigns, posters, events, hashtags, just using social media to really bring the students together and get them in the know on what's going on. I want to have monthly or bi-weekly showcases of other student organizations on campus so people know a little bit about something they didn't know previously, something that they could get involved in, something they can become a part of here. Thank you. Last question, what do you see as an area of opportunity for SGA next year? And how do you plan to use this position on executive board to capitalize on that opportunity? I just think, I'm just going to keep saying we're talking about social media because that's just, that's a huge thing here. Everyone's on their phones. When you cannot walk to and from or from class without seeing someone looking down on their phone, that means something. People are on there. And I'm sorry, I lost my train. People are on there and they're looking at stupid stuff. It's just, it's dumb. There are so many things that, that are going on on this campus that people don't know about. We are such a diverse campus. I'm not talking about race and ethnicity. I'm talking about the things that we do. We have people that are on athletic teams. We have people that are part of the NAACP. We have people that are part of so many different organizations. And if we can just get that message out there, that there's a place for you on this campus, then you're going to want to stay. You're going to want to get more involved and you're going to want to be a better member of Quinnipiac. And I think that I can bring that to the students. I know I can do that. I get it. I got it. We're good. We're good. Thank you, Ryan. Um, now I have the opportunity for your closing statement. I uh, just want to say thank you for all of you guys that stayed. Um, it's going to be a good year. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone who came to SGA debates tonight, and thank you for the candidates for sharing all of your messages with us. Um, on Wednesday, now it's your turn to be heard, so cast your vote on DPU. Thank you again for coming, and have a safe night.